People here are waking up to their biggest fear. Their nightmare was real. All they can do is wait, and the hours feel like days. This is the scene right now. We are at 86th Street and Collins Avenue in Miami. Scores of Miami-Dade police officers, Miami-Dade fire rescue. We are about two to three blocks from this scene where this happened. I have not seen a scene of this magnitude since I was a kid growing up in the Northeast during 9-11. I was at the reunification center, and I saw scores of people who were displaced by this collapse wait around for hours before being escorted to a nearby hotel. The family members that remained waiting to hear news of their loved one. Swarming Governor Ron DeSantis when he got there. Hours went by before the county organized a list of people who were accounted for, and one person from each family was allowed to go into a separate room and check to see if their loved one was on that list. The rest of them waiting outside, looking through the window to see either jubilation or more pain, feeling hopeless. We've never felt this before. I can't believe it. At moments, you see a person break down, and then, you know, that's kind of contagious too. Um, but everybody at Surfside is, is a great place to live. There's a real sense of community here, and everybody's right now working together. One man I spoke with lived in the condos, but he was in business in Washington, D.C. when this happened. His wife from the condo, the fourth floor of the condo, called him around 1.30 in the morning and said, Honey, I think there's an earthquake happening. The building is shaking. He heard the collapse happen over the phone. And as of right now, that's the last time those two spoke. You'll hear from him coming up at 6 o'clock. I see it's raining there badly. I can't imagine this is helping search efforts there now. You can see how the conditions around us, where we are right now on 86th Street, are impacting the search on 88th Street and all along Collins Avenue. We just heard from the mayor of Miami-Dade County, Daniela Levine Cava. She did express those numbers to us and, and offered a little bit of good news, too, that they are continuing this search because they believe that there are people alive underneath that rubble crying out for help, which is why Miami Fire Rescue uh, offers some information to us about how they are using sound technology to try to detect people or detect any kind of movement or sound through titanium steel walls. Those noise radar systems that they are using, it could detect anything from twisting steel, twisting metal, to someone crying out for help. And Michael, quickly as we have you here, any sense of what's happening out there when these showers and storms move in? Are people kind of going inside temporarily? It certainly does impact, I should say impede, some of the investigation, but they were working through a fire. They are going to work through rain, and that was what the mayor of Miami-Dade County expressed, that she actually has to go in there and convince these firefighters to leave their shift. These are firefighters and law enforcement officials that are on the search and rescue mission that do not want to give up, that won't give up, rain or shine. You can also see the dust flying through the air, polluting this air in Miami as we are waiting for answers. I spent time yesterday with a man who was on the phone with his wife when this collapse happened. Take a listen. I was on the phone with her at 1.30. She called me up and she said, I think there's an earthquake. And she looked down at the balcony and the pool area had kind of a sinkhole. And then the building started to shake, rattle and she, and she screamed and then the phone went dead. Your heart absolutely breaks in half when you hear that. It looks right now, at least, Michael, that the weather has lightened up, making it easier for these uh, rescuers to do their job and find any people underneath that rubble. It certainly has. It's been so on and off from the beginning of the morning. It was even raining a little bit at 5 a.m. when we first started going live here. There are about 131 firefighters inside the rubble searching for those unaccounted for. That's not even including all the personnel outside on the streets. There are six agencies from outside Miami-Dade coming into this city to help. Now, this trench is very critical to the continuation of the search and rescue process. And that process is a very slow one. This morning, Week News reporter Michael Hudak is live in Surfside for us. And Michael, you have been speaking with people still waiting on any word from their loved ones. What are they telling you at this point? 
This community in Surfside has rallied around these displaced families and these victims by providing them with so much, right? Food, shelter, money, but all they want is answers. All they want is word on their loved ones, and the search to find those answers is currently underway on this fourth morning that we see this incredible debris. It's not until you stand next to this debris, or at least down the street from it, guys, that you realize how high that debris is. Look at that, three to four stories high. As you can see, the Collins Avenue sign, it surpasses that in terms of height. You look up the side of that building, and it is just eerie to see the awnings, the curtains, the towels blowing in the wind, a sight that has not changed since last Friday. All they want is word. As I mentioned just hours ago, family members were allowed to come to the site of the collapse and pay their respects, mourning in their own way. This was the first time they were allowed to do this. The wall of mementos right down the street, photographs, toys that were found in the rubble, and messages from loved ones and strangers that read, we love you, you will never be alone. I had the chance to go home over the weekend. These people went home to the same exact area. Even even I couldn't get these images out of my mind, and this is exactly why. It's because of what you see across the street. We are over here right about a block away from Collins Avenue, as you can see. And guys, it's just the depth of this crime scene shocks me every single time I look at it. Look at the height of all of that debris. It's three or four stories high. You're taking a live look at first responders risking their lives in real time to try to find any survivors. They've been able to dig some tunnels through there. They've had to deal with multiple fires. Uh, Michael, any expectation of what today will bring? Well, families are receiving private updates almost hour by hour every single day, so they are waiting for information in real time. Their lives, which have already bent so much, could break at any moment in time throughout any day. It's such a fragile situation. If we're talking about a fragile situation, you have to take a look at what's happening behind us right now. The wind has picked up on this Monday morning. The feeling is everywhere, not only when you look at that wall, but when you look at the building behind us as well. Every time I look at that building, I think of someone like a little child, Stella Caterosi. Her family, the Caterosi family, was at apartment 501. All of them, all five that were in that apartment, still missing, still unaccounted for. I think of someone like Edgar Gonzalez, who was in his apartment on the ninth floor with his wife and his 16-year-old daughter, Devin. When the collapse happened, the wife and daughter, Devin, fell to the fourth floor. Although she had a crushed pelvis, somehow his wife was able to take their daughter and make it to safety. Edgar is still missing. I had an interesting conversation as we take a live look at this building right now. I want to also mentioned the rain is kind of subsiding right now, but you see it is still impeding the progress that we have seen uh, so far this morning. You don't see any responders on top of that pile like you did an hour ago, but, but back to the point I was making was the conversation I was having with Edgar's best friend of 24 years. We just ran into this guy at the memorial wall, and he was saying about a year ago he was visiting Edgar on the ninth floor of this apartment, an apartment that has now completely collapsed, and when he was stepping outside onto the balcony, he did not feel safe on that balcony. That was a year ago. He said the floor was kind of crooked. He wouldn't let the dog go out there, uh, even if Edgar did. There is such uncertainty in the air as to how this happened, why this happened. Well, it feels like an ever-changing situation, and it is an ever-changing situation. The reason why we kind of lost you guys earlier in the hour was because we were being asked to move in the middle of the live shot to this condensed area because, as you can see, the scene is expanding. They're kind of blocking off these roads now to get rid of that morning traffic, but we can still see some of those crews and responders all the way across the street about two blocks away. They are still working through that fluid situation and honestly, guys, risking their lives because you never know. Although that building looks stable, you just never know what could happen at any point in time. Guys? And Michael, we, you know, we've heard crews trying to make sure they keep everything very quiet out there so they can still hear any screams for help or tapping from any possible victims. Is that still the case? What does it sound like out there near the construction site, the debris site? Well, well, Corey, we can hear the noise from the construction, from the excavation, all the way over here, say 200, 300 feet away, blocks down the way. So you can only imagine how loud it might be at the actual scene. But they are using sonar technology to try to listen in through the cracks, listen in through the steel and the titanium to try to find any source, any kind of noise source that they can find. Now, that ranges a little bit, right? Because that could be twisting steel and metal or a floor collapsing, or that could be a loved one whose face is on on that wall that we showed you over a couple of minutes ago who is crying out for help who might be yelling for a loved one and yelling for help we have seen circumstances where people have been fighting through the rubble and trying to get out and a firefighter has rescued them we will continue to keep you updated as the morning rolls on we are anticipating a press conference around 11 a.m this morning haven't gotten the exact time confirmed great reporting michael thank you 
What's the feeling around the area there? The feeling is chaos, but in a way it's organized chaos. You might be wondering why we have to stay so far away from the scene itself. Uh, that's because they have these roads blocked off, and the reason for that is because they need the room for extra reinforcements. Take a look, Jacksonville Fire and Rescue Department. They just pulled up to the scene, and Miami-Dade Fire Rescue is actually helping them out, funneling out and giving them gas uh, because of the trip that they just made. You also see the FEMA truck all the way in the distance over there with the satellites on top of it. This road is blocked off not to disrupt traffic or not to really impact the scene that we have over at the collapse itself, but to really make room for everyone. As I stand here and I look at that building in the distance, you see what is remaining of the Champlain Towers, the names and the faces of the victims run through my mind. You have the reinforcements coming in, a press conference coming up at 1130. We've got that time confirmed. We'll bring that to you and all the information that comes with it. This press conference that we heard was truly unprecedented. The faces that were there all standing in unity. I've never seen all of these people in the same place at the same time. What was reiterated that really caught my attention was this is the largest deployment of enforcement and reinforcement in the state of Florida that is in the history of the state that has not been a hurricane. It is as big as the reinforcement that was deployed for Hurricane Michael, which was a 12 county hurricane. There are investigators on this scene trying to figure out what happened and what led to this crash that were also investigating ground zero during 9-11. But there is a daunting image that we have been able to see from this spot right here on this Tuesday morning. I want to take a look right now, a very close look at this building. What you're about to see are called X codes, sometimes called Katrina crosses, but officially they are called search codes by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, that's FEMA. So that is on the side of the building. We did not notice those yesterday. Let me explain what that is. The shorthanded painted to the left of the X identifies the rescue squad. At the top of the X, it delineates the time and date that that team arrive. And as we move clockwise around that X, the bottom of the ask rescue workers list the number of people found inside that apartment inside that residence. It was really implemented during Hurricane Katrina. They use that sometimes during disasters. This is a perfect example of the, the size and scope of this rescue mission. It is the largest one search and rescue mission, the largest deployment of reinforcement in the history of the state of Florida. That's not for a hurricane. We'll try to get more info on, on that building and try to read some of those numbers for now. I'll send it back to you reporting in Surfside. Michael Hudak Wink News now. Great perspective for us, Michael. Thank you. And take a look. What you see there are red X's to the right side of those balconies and windows where the building collapsed. Those are called Katrina crosses or X codes. Officially, they're called search codes by FEMA. This is extremely unprecedented and unique, guys. That tactic you see has never, ever been used in the history of the state of Florida for something other than a hurricane. So on the left side of those X's is the name of the rescue squad. On the top of the X is the time and date they arrived. And on the bottom of the X were any people that were found inside of those buildings. Every single one of those X's has a zero in the bottom column. We are working to get more answers. I'll try to see some more images from that building and bring that to you live for throughout the rest of the morning. Reporting in Surfside, Michael Hudak, Wink News Now. Excellent reporting, Michael. Thank you. Can you explain to us, Michael, the difference between those who are missing versus unaccounted for? So missing and unaccounted for, you can actually kind of couple them together, right? If you don't know where that person is and they are missing, they are unaccounted for. But I also want to point out that if someone is found, I mean, I'm going to say this, dead or alive, they are accounted for. Their person is accounted for. We're trying to get the best angles that we can. We're on 88th Street right now, and you can see some of the damage from this angle. They have been so tight-lipped about everything that's going on uh, today and, and this traffic that we have going on here. It really is a headache for the people that live around here and are just trying to enjoy maybe a Tuesday morning walking around. You can see people have to turn around around this angle right here, this roundabout, but even over here, these cones um, blocking off what is just someone's normal everyday life. It was around this area, guys, that we actually met somebody from Naples. Someone drove all the way over from our area of Florida and wanted to see the damage. He actually was in a ministry service here uh, yesterday and was able to get some inspiration from that. Take a listen. Earlier, one of the guys, he's from Israeli or something, he's, he went through the earthquake in Haiti, and after 14 days later, he's still finding survivors. So, if somebody's still there breathing, man, through after all. So, you got to keep trying until you find he, something. He, that's what he said. God allow us to things to happen, but your heart have to keep going. 
your heart definitely wants to keep going, and that's what they're doing here. This is still a search and rescue mission. This is not a recovery mission just yet, but you also have to empathize with what these families are going through right now because a body, a surviving body, someone alive, has not been found from this site behind us here in Surfside since the early morning hours on Thursday when this first happened around 1.30 and into Friday. So we're just hoping for the best and hopefully getting an updated press conference later on this morning as we did yesterday. Michael, you've been covering this story for us from the beginning since Friday. How has the feel of the area changed as we enter day six now of the search? It is growingly anxious with each passing day and each passing moment. I think the mayor of Surfside, Charles Burke, had put it perfectly, right? We're not running out of resources. We're running out of luck, and all people can do is pray. That's exactly what they did last night at a candlelight vigil that was held around 9 o'clock that Wink News was covering. While they searched for solace, crews from overseas, as you mentioned, help search for survivors. There's actually a search and rescue team as well as rabbi from Israel here to support. They traveled in. I spoke exclusively with Florida Ag Commissioner Nikki Fried, who is Jewish and grew up in Miami, and asked her what this is doing for the Jewish community here. Take a listen. But talking to a lot of the families, having all of the rabbis there and having some of that support that they know and are comfortable with coming over from Israel um, continue to create comfort to a lot of these families. That is, it's all hands on deck mm -hmm. and that we're going to do everything we can to bring peace. We've been so focused on the building itself, the towers itself, and finding out what happened and the structure and what is left in the debris. Sometimes we just got to take a moment and take a look at a wall like this, a makeshift memorial that the community came together to create. This is just something that makes your heart kind of break in half when you see these people who are still unaccounted for. I think of someone right here, Graciela and Estella Catarosi. They were on you know, apartment 501. Their entire family, five people were in that uh, room. They are still unaccounted for. I think of Edgar Gonzalez. His wife wife and 16-year-old daughter Devin were on the ninth floor. They fell to the fourth floor. The wife and Devin, the 16-year-old daughter, made their way out. They escaped. Edgar is still unaccounted for. I think of Miriam and Arnie Notkin right there. You see uh, lower there. Arnie was a well-known PE teacher. I mean, people from across the country have come here to pay their respects, and you can see that very evident. I even ran into someone from Naples. Who Half survivor was pulled out alive four days ago. Wink News reporter Michael Hudak is on the scene right now. Michael, what new developments are coming in? Well, the new developments right now, as of noon, Nicole, are coming from the sky. You can see how this inclement weather can certainly impede some of the progress. Yesterday morning, it was pouring rain. They had to stop some of what they were doing and then continue. Well, let me answer your question with this. I got a statement last night from the family of one of the people who is still unaccounted for, and they told me unless President Biden can tell them that their loved one is alive, he can't really bring them peace. But they are glad that he will be coming here with the First Lady. And listen, I can empathize with that, right? This memorial wall you see behind me, the Champlain Towers in the background that are still standing, they have become international painstaking images. But it's not until you see them in person that you truly grasp the severity of this situation. And guys, I also spoke to a man who lives right down the street. He's lived down the street from the Champlain Towers his entire life. He pointed out, hey, Joe Biden has lost two of his own children in his lifetime. So if anyone knows what to say to these families, it's him. People in this area are praying for a miracle and they're looking forward to praying with the president and the first lady. I believe that we always need our uh, leadership in, in hard times so I think it's a good thing that he's coming just to show us that he's here with us, that, that he understands what is happening. And I think it's good for our, our, the president to be here and show his leadership just like the governor of the state has been here. I think it's a good thing. Prayers and love. Dios esta con ustedes. God is with you all. My heart breaks in half when I see some of the images of these families. Miriam and Arnie Notkin. Arnie was a profound, loved gym teacher at a local high school. And how about this picture right there? The Gara family. As you guys mentioned earlier, Emma, four years old. Lucia, 10 years old. They were the four and 10 year olds, respectively, who were dragged out of the rubble, unfortunately, yesterday. It is such a heartbreaking scene here. But people in this area feel like this visit by President Biden is extremely timely because he's lost two children of his own. Innately he knows what to say plus let's face it the guy's been through you know two significant deaths you know two sets of deaths in his life he knows exactly you know if anybody can you know comfort them I think he can.
As we send it back to you, I want to give you this lasting image of the Gara family. Reporting in Surfside, Michael Hudak, Wink News. Now, guys, the cranes have stopped. They haven't moved all morning. Take a look. Search and rescue mission stopped around 2.11 this morning for a couple of reasons. One, between 6 and 12 inches of movement and a column hanging from the original structure and slight movement in concrete floor slabs on the south side of the building. There's heavy police presence beyond those green barriers that you see down there. But as far as this street is concerned, where we are in 88th, right before Harding Avenue, we are not seeing a lot of police presence over here. And it is eerily quiet. We will continue to keep you updated as we learn more and hopefully get some more information as the President of the United States is about to arrive at Miami International Airport around 9.30. The mayor of Miami-Dade County, Daniela Levine Cava, tweeted out about 15 minutes ago saying that this visit by President Biden would not pause or impede or, or stop any of the search and rescue efforts. It seems like those efforts might have been stopped before the President's arrival.